Hi, my name is Dr. Eric Janowitz, and I am the founder of Synergy Oviedo Chiropractic. And today I'm going to answer the question that most people ask me when involved in a car accident, and that is, what is a whiplash and how does it really occur? Well, to understand that, we must understand a little bit of spinal anatomy. So this is my spine, George, over here. And when you look at the spine, obviously the spine should be nice and straight from front to back. And so this is the pelvis, this is your hips, this is your neck, your mid-back, and your lower back. Uh, the bones are represented in the white, and in between the bones are the discs. Now the discs act as a shock absorber to allow the body to handle the forces of gravity. Now, from front to back, obviously, like I said, it should be straight. But from the side, your spine should have three curves. It should have a forward curve in your neck, a backwards curve in your mid-back, and then a forward curve in your lower back. So this is the person looking this way. So if we're gonna pretend for a moment that the seat is right over here, okay, and that the person is driving this way, and let's suppose somebody had a rear-end impact. So Another class that I love besides anatomy is physics, and that is that an object in motion stays in motion unless otherwise changed, right? And so if a person then is sitting, say, at a traffic light, okay, in their car, minding their own business, and then all of a sudden a car comes into them from the rear, what's going to happen is that car, say, is moving at 10, 15 miles an hour, collides into the patient's vehicle. Two things are gonna happen. One is the car is gonna crumple and it's going to absorb the force of the impact. So at a higher speed, that car is gonna crumple more, right? And it's going to be able to slow down that, that acceleration force to the person in the car. Now on the other side of the fence, many people are thrilled to see, wow, there was no damage to my car. But that means that, that that force was translated to the occupants of the vehicle instead even more. And so either way, the car crumples or it doesn't, that car is moving at a particular mile an hour. Then what happens is that this person is stopped. What's going to happen is they're stopped. The car is moving in space around them. So now the car is being pushed forward while they are stationary. Again, stay with me here. So what happens here is if the seat is pushing forward, what do you think is going to happen to the neck? The neck is going to whip back because you have a 12 pound head on top of a stick here. It's going to go ahead and come back. That's called hyperextension. And as that extends, that's going to cause compression to the back of the spine, which has other anatomy like spinous processes and joints. And there's ligaments in the front here, this one here called the anterior longitudinal ligament. That ligament can be stretched. When this occurs here, that's going to cause stretching on the front, compression on the back. And again, the nerves are the yellow that are coming out of here and the spinal cord is inside. That's the really important tissue. So the first step that's going to happen is this hyperextension. As the car, your car slows down, then what occurs is now it's slowing down. Your foot might have been on the brake, hopefully. And then now as it slows down, your head from going to hyperextension is going to be whipped back into what's called hyperflexion. So now what occurs is now the front is going to be jammed and compressed just like the back was in under a second ago. And now the back is going to be stretched and there's ligaments here inside the spine called the posterior longitudinal ligaments, which is the backside. So now this area gets pulled and compressed. These discs inside here now can be susceptible to getting tears and they can actually cause the disc to bulge or herniate because this forward force will push the disc back. Now that's really important because if the disc goes back, it can affect and eventually pinch and irritate the nerves in your spine. This also can cause stretching and tension to the spinal cord itself. So this is a hyperflexion, hyperextension, uh, first hyperextension and then hyperflexion type injury, also known in household terms as a whiplash. Now what's crazy is that this whole process takes typically under one second, but the damage that it can occur because it's the soft tissue, the connective tissue, can take 
weeks, months, even years to heal, and in some cases, the damage could be permanent. That's why it's really critical that if you have this type of injury, no amount of anti-inflammatories, pain medication, muscle relaxers are going to fix this. This has to be rehabilitated in a chiropractic office that has a rehab-oriented practice is best designed to take care of this to use tools. So in our practice, we use chiropractic to work on the biomechanics of the actual joints, how they're moving. We have physical therapy in our practice to work on the surrounding tissue. We have therapies that are specific for common injuries for car accidents like disc problems. We use something called spinal decompression therapy. We have laser therapy to reduce inflammation in a non-pharmacological, non-drug, non-potentially addictive uh, medication manner. So there's a lot of tools in the tool chest. So if you have one of these whiplashes, you want to make sure that you're evaluated by a chiropractor in your area. Best thing to do is, you know, search chiropractor near me, look at the Google reviews, uh, look at the website, see if they do work with auto accident cases, see if they've had specialized training. So I learned all this, not necessarily in the classroom. I learned it by taking advanced courses. So I studied with the guy that actually wrote the book on this that was uh, given to us when we were in class. So you wanna make sure that you're with somebody who knows how to manage all the injuries, how to assess all the injuries, understands the biomechanics of them, and can get you on the right path for healing. The other thing that you just want to keep in mind is that not only is your neck potentially whipping backwards and forwards, but your brain inside your skull is also going through the same forces, and we'll have that on another video when we talk about mild traumatic brain injuries, another common and oftentimes under diagnosed and under understood issue in regards to auto accident cases. So I'm Dr. Eric Janowitz with Synergy of Eater Chiropractic. I hope this information was valuable. Hopefully it wasn't too technical and we look forward to helping you in any way that we can. Thank you.